money is tight and your spouse has received their third online shopping delivery of the week, what happens next? This is very simple for me, people. Return it. Or you don't eat. I will eat. And if you decide to return it, we can both eat. (laughs) You probably saw a future with that person. Maybe you wanted to marry that person. And now you're still keeping in touch. I can't stop myself from feeling. But I can control my actions. Cheating can be great in a lot of areas. You got me feeling good today. (laughs) Welcome to Jan Session number five with Jazz. And Montez. Today we're talking all about finances. (laughs) One of his favorite topics. <laughs> so, should be a fun one. Today's podcast is sponsored by Pride Athletics. This is one of my close friends that I went to college with. His motto, give more. Always give back, people. And then what about these paintings oh, behind yes. us? <laughs> New paintings. My guy, Russ. Definitely my favorite artist. Modest Art 88, baby. I think, for me, this is a little bit more of a feminine painting. This is a little bit more of a, a masculine painting. I don't know how, but she got it towards that one and I got it towards this one. So that's usually why I say it. But, you know, your take on it. What do you guys think? Well, we're going to get started on these questions. So, all right. Your significant other quits their job to become a rapper. The mixtape is dropping in two weeks, but so are the bills. Would you support them? Follow your dreams. No questions. Yeah, absolutely. Follow your dreams. I'm, I'm I'm a big advocate for the support of the arts. Of course, you need to figure out what you need to do to back yourself. And if you have a team, a team is always greater than the individual. Two minds, two pockets, four pockets, eight pockets, how many, how many you, you need. But yes, I, w- I would definitely support, support their dreams until they decide that it's no longer something that they want to pursue or so, something that they no, no longer love. That right. mixtape better be fire. Though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is also basically saying like that they quit their job and so they don't have any income. And they're saying, would you support them financially? When yes, they I'm still me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm still me. So like, I'm capable. I don't do a lot of the outside stuff that most of people my age, younger or older, do. Like I'm not much of a partier, so I'm addicted to working instead of partying. So I, I will make sure that financially I'm able to, if that is my partner. I'm not just like funding someone else's dreams. Ain't nobody out here funding my dream. So, but if it's my part, yes. Yeah, she she got it. And how long could a partner not bring income in before it starts affecting the relationship? I mean, it could be tomorrow. It could be 20 years from now, but there will be a plan. How long do you feel like you can pursue this before you think it will get to a certain point? How many hours are you putting in a week to make sure that this is happening? Are we keeping track of your progress? What are we considering progress? If this is your passion, are you putting that much time into this passion or are you putting more time into something else that's a distraction? There's going to be checks and balances. I I am not just, I don't invest in anything without there being an understanding of the now and the future. The game plan is the game plan. All right. <laughs> well, for me, I think, I mean, yeah, I would absolutely support my partner, but there would come a point where even me, myself, if I was pursuing a dream, I would still want to also figure out how I, how I could contribute to the household. And if that means working on another job that I don't love, but that's still helping out, I think that that is just what you should do. And so I would expect if my man was pursuing his passion and his dream and he spent most of his time doing that, he should still find a side hustle that could also contribute to the household because that's, yeah. Yeah, right. That's part of the plan. That's definitely part right. of the plan. Okay. I'm, I'm not just funding any, like someone else is going to be putting in towards their own dream as well. Like if my partner just feels like I'm the cash cow, nah, that's not a partnership nope. that I'm looking for at least. Right. So yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. But that's, that goes along to me saying, if you're better at something, you lead in at something. But that doesn't mean there's not support from the other person. Right. Yeah. Money is tight. And your spouse has received their third online shopping delivery of the week. What happens next? This is very simple for me, people. The return button is very easy to press. (laughs) Like Amazon is not against a return policy and neither am I. So (laughs) send that thing. And like for me, money is always tight, whether I have it or not. Like I'm still working on a budget. Like I don't just have money and it's just being spent because I have it. That's not how I function at any point in my life. When I had money, when I don't have money, when I do have money, it doesn't matter. 
I'm not just out here spending just willy nilly. There's not, there's not, it's never been a part of Montez. So at no point is someone else going to be spending, <laughs> especially like it's my, my, if I have a savings, it's a savings for a reason. If I have a separate bank account that's supposed to be going to something else, it's a separate bank account that's supposed to be going for something, whether it's housing or whether I'm saving up for a new car. That doesn't mean that you just get to, we just get to spend. There, there will be a budget for spending. And if you, if that bank account is tight, then that bank account is also tight for, for spending. Shopping. Right. What if it's her money though? Is she spending? Oh, what? Do your thing. Uh, Cause I, I'm, I, I am always going to have, I don't care what the situation is. I'm going to be, I'm going to have a savings enough for me to at least survive and figure something out for a couple of months. I specifically as an individual, I'm going to be fine, but I, I took it as like a joint bank account. So if it's a joint bank account, <laughs> return it or you don't eat. I will eat. You're not going to, you just spent your food money. Or your gas money, just because you don't decide to budget doesn't mean I, I should suffer. And if you decide to return it, we can both eat. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I think I, it, a conversation would absolutely be had. I wouldn't be like, you have to return it or you're not going to eat. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but <laughs> I am. <laughs> but I do think that moving forward, like that, that couldn't. That couldn't happen again or it shouldn't happen again. So Oh, so you would they could just keep it and you're just gonna go through the struggle. I mean, I think we'd figure it out. I, I have faith that you can figure it out. If it was something that was completely a frivolous spend and like there's no reason why they needed it right then, I think I would have I would present a compromise. After the conversation, I think I would just say, you know, I think you have a choice to make. Do you think this is a smart, like the best decision for us or not? But I wouldn't force anyone to do anything. At no point in my relationship am I condoning selfish activity. If if it was a, I really want this, every problem that I go into solving, I always think about time. You really want this. Wait a couple of days. Wait a couple of weeks. Do you still really want that thing? By then, you've had enough time to put $2 aside a day, $5 aside a day, $20 aside a day, whatever the budget is. And then now we can afford that thing. But at no point are you just going to decide at the cost of the collective. So you can be nice. I won't be nice. Next question. (laughs) (laughs) True or false? $50 is enough to take a woman out on a quality date. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. But I'm also very creative. So like. I was going to say it depends on your woman. But I do think that it should be enough as long as you are creative. I don't see why, why utilizing what you have is not enough. Because if you just listen to what that person likes and doesn't like, what that person has experienced and hasn't experienced, a simple night under the stars conversation is more growth than going to dinner and talking about how rare the steak is or what you're wearing. (laughs) I mean, I think you can have a quality date with no money at all. I was literally thinking that, but I didn't want that to... (laughs) Yeah. Because my thing is, you're going to date with anybody. It doesn't have to be romantic. Coffee is a date. Daddy-daughter day is still a date. If I go out to... The movies with my brother. It's a sibling date. I mean, you can look at it however you, you want to look at it, but a date is a date. It can be free. It can be free of stress. It can be free. <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. True or false? If a man is not financially stable, he should not be dating. Anybody can date whoever they are allowed to date, but someone who is not up to someone else's standard should not be held to a certain standard or controlled by that person's standards. So anybody can date anybody. There are a lot of different kinds of human beings in this planet. And at a base, we're still animals. We're here to mate. We're here to procreate. So to say that somebody cannot have their birthright of procreation is kind of insane. But he just went there. <laughs> it, it Seriously. Now, I'm going to say that just to preface this next wild statement. Because we're it's about to it's about to get real. People are different. And no, I don't think everybody is suited to be in a relationship. The same way I don't think everybody has the capability of being a good parent. Maybe that's a hot take, but I don't care. There are some people out here are legit just wild, legit crazy, that don't love themselves enough to be in a relationship. In the exact same way, <laughs> I don't think. People are capable of being a good parent. You should not have the responsibility of another person's life in your hands. 
Because poor people are allowed to have love too. I'm just saying. Rich people are allowed to have love. Poor people are allowed to have love. Purple people are allowed to have love. It's sometimes that pursuit of that love that gives people life. So no, I don't think it's about money. Answer your question. <laughs> answer how you answer. Don't let me persuade you. Answer how you... Obviously, we disagree. <laughs> so continue. No, no. The thing is, I don't think either person... If it, mm, I don't know. That's That's tough. Because if you both struggle and you want to struggle together by all means i then that's fine but i think if you want to have a successful relationship financially you both should be financially stable if if you're trying to really build something i don't know because if you start in the gutter I, like i said before four hands are greater than two if you guys can get on the same page have the same mission in mind and you both are dedicated to whatever that goal is the chances of being successful have heightened so I think they should still be able to find a suitor or be with someone who is capable of suiting in a certain way. And then the financial can, come, can later. come together. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. I have to agree with you on that one. Yeah. I mean, even a lot of relationships, a lot of marriages, a lot of people, like they'll say, like, we started from here and like we built this together. And that's kind of, that's really beautiful. What? Everybody's here is different. Right. Yeah, so I mean, people are like, oh, yeah, I started from here. It's a three-bedroom house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, like you, when someone says here, like my here is like every day eating hot dogs and baked beans for lunch and only getting two meals a day or 14 people living in a two-bedroom home or apartment or you heating the crib up with your oven or simple things that you need to, most people don't consider, right. that's, that's the bottom everybody's floor and everybody's ceiling is very different if you made enough to cover all the bills and live comfortably could you be happy with a housewife or a house husband no but it's not because i would have a problem with handling all the bills that's not my issue my issue is i'm just not dating or marrying anybody that's not ambitious that yep (laughs) you nailed it all right cool (laughs) i had this conversation with my brother literally i don't know a few days ago we were talking about this I wouldn't mind being the primary one that like leaves the house if he wanted to stay home with the kids or whatever, or we took turns like that doesn't matter to me, but someone that doesn't have a vision beyond that or have ambition, motivation, like pursuing something, even if they did it from the, from home and they were like working on their passion and project or doing something that. that That'd be working on that (laughs) mixtape. That's that's fire. (laughs) I need that fuego. I need all bars. Only bars. Only bars. <laughs> From the gutter bars. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think that answers that question then. Yeah. And then what financial expectations do you have of someone that you're dating? Expectations. At minimum, they should be able to take care of themselves going into a relationship for me. I'm not funding anybody's dreams off the bat. If she can pay her own bills, drive her own car, if she's capable of being selfless, that's typically the discipline, things like that. That's typically for for Tez. But I'm always thinking with time in the future. So if her and I do end up together long term, she needs to be able to take care of our legacy, our future kids. So financially, she should understand how to utilize the money that I have left to her or that we've built together so that they have the opportunity to then do the same and that legacy continues. But that goes into understanding how money can make money, what is needed to be in a savings account so that there is some type of rainy day fund for a certain amount of time. There's a few things. So financially as an individual, what they have is not just what they have, what they come to the table with, but also having the mentality of what could possibly come to reality, that is not a good thing. And then have the idea or understanding financially, like mentally, of what to do to mitigate that risk. Yeah, that's that's a minimum. That's a high standard. I'm sorry, but that's a minimum required for me. Requirement. Yeah, I think having someone that, that is wise with their money, but also can take some risks because I think in order to win big, you have to risk a little. So having someone that isn't a hundred percent like I'm only gonna have it in the savings account, but being smart with how you invest, right? All investments have a little bit of risk involved. So someone that does want to multiply their money so that it's not people that aren't like afraid, too afraid of losing, but wise in how they 
I guess, maneuver with their finances is is important. Investing is huge. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I totally, we, I think we just said the same thing, just in different words. I think it, that comes in order. Oh, 100%. Now we're getting off, off the question a little bit. We're actually talking about, for me, there goes the savings for that rainy day, right. that rainy month or right. rainy, rainy couple of months. And then there goes the investment portfolio. And within that investment portfolio, you have money that you put into an account that you use specifically for investments. Right. And then you come up with this idea of when I want to take out this investment. You look at the markets to make sure, obviously, you want to pull it out earlier. You want to wait a little bit, obviously. But that account that you utilize that money for, that money is gambling money. That money is lost money. Like, I don't, I don't gamble. Like, I don't go to the casino. And, right, no. Like, that's just, no. that's just, it's not for me. But what I do gamble with is the potential to make money in stocks or crypto, s- crypto, mm-hmm. smaller companies, right. rising companies, larger, like that type of things. And to me, that is a form of gambling. Some people would argue against, I don't care. The money in that account is already lost. That's how I see it. I don't count it either. Okay, cool. Yeah, my whole portfolio, like no matter what I've got in there right now, it could be gone tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm not, it just, that's like out of sight, out of mind. That doesn't count right. for what I actually so I, have in my hand. And how I further <laughs> justify it is like, I don't go out and party. I don't go on extravagant dates. Mm-hmm. I don't have a wild amount of frivolous spending for absolutely no reason at all that most people do. So the money that most people would utilize that on, I did a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. I take that amount of money and I put it into an account. Mm -hmm. And that is the account that I gamble with. (laughs) So it's like, yeah, the amount that other people are, I guess, putting back into the economy, I'm putting back into the economy in a different way and also into my pockets in some time, in some ways. Yeah. I will add to one more thing, though, that I also would say is an expectation is to still be generous. Because I think generosity is a beautiful attribute and it's a character, a character trait that I think is as a must. I think being generous is a beautiful thing. If you're stingy and you're like Midas and you're just hoarding it all to Midas. yourself and you don't want to, <laughs> and you don't want to, you know, bless other people and, and still have open hands, you know, when, and be smart about it. But I'm just saying like being generous is, is huge. Yeah. I'm learning. I'll be honest. I'm learning. Sometimes I'm I'm overly nice, and people can take advantage take that, of that. They but they take that niceness, that kindness, as a requirement from me. Mm. Yeah, so I'm I'm learning to like reel it back. All right, when you get married, should you have a shared bank account or separate ones? Yeah, you should have a shared bank account. You should have at minimum three bank accounts because you're still individual people. And I know that people have this idea that when you get married. Your souls become one and you're forever on an eternal path in the in the same step with your significant other. And it sounds like a like a fairy tale to me. But to each their own. I personally feel you should have one personal account, another personal account. And then collectively you both put money into this account. Like you it's talked about, negotiated, confirmed, whether it is the same amount of money or it's based on a agreed percentage of that income to go into that money. And then you collectively decide to pay bills, trips, medical, anything that's a requirement first, and then collective pleasure afterwards for you two and the family. And then the other two, <laughs> be great while being respectful to your relationship. <laughs> what you looking at? <laughs> Oh, I don't remember who who I just saw this. I saw this video like pretty recently. I can't remember who it was. Oh my god, he's so famous. Anyway, he ha- he had a really good idea. I feel like about the bank account thing. He said have four bank accounts, and I agreed with it actually. Okay. So he said have one account where you collectively um, pay the bills and you know cover all the like major expenses that that's where you guys both put in and then have your two separate accounts then also have another joint account that is a savings account that you agree to put a certain amount in every every month every whatever every two weeks however you guys want to decide that but basically saying that that still gives you an opportunity to be individuals and to have your you know but see this is my thing so let's say because this whole thing what if the, the bills are covered the savings is there 
but maybe she makes, I don't know, millions of dollars. And so she's got, you know, all this money or he does either way with her extra money. Maybe she wants to spend it on like, I want a new dress every time that I have an event. Is that going to be an issue? It's, no. What the f First off, okay. if a woman that I'm dating has millions of dollars, that is a beautiful thing for me because I am wildly competitive. Like wildly, not in the sense that I will like bring her down in any way, but my goal would be to also make millions and millions and millions of dollars so that I can at least beat her by like a dollar. <laughs> like, you know? But collectively, we still banging bank right now. So like <laughs> it doesn't matter. But like if she is doing her thing, it will be an inspiration to me. That ambition that's burning inside of me. I love that answer. Oh, boy. But no, what? Like, if she got millions, she got that extra, her own account to do whatever, wherever she want. What, what are we talking about? Yes, absolutely. Be, Be great. great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good answer. That was just a tangent because so we already answered the question about the separate or the joint. We said both. Do you think that both partners should contribute equally to all household bills? I, does it depend on like why or why not? If you can contribute equally, why not? Right. Yeah, yeah why, yeah, why not? Right. But if one person has a full-time job, they both have full-time jobs, and then one of them does all the... I feel like everything should be equal, period. Even, like, household... Wait, what was the scenario? You just, just said, forget the question. We're going straight... What happened? No, because there are cer certain people that would say that the woman and the man... If they both work full-time, and then the woman comes home, she still has a full-time job of, like, all the household chores and cooking and cleaning and kids and putting them to bed and all of that. Like sometimes that can be like an expectation. And I think that those things should be shared. That's what I was going to say, which oh, means yeah. also like it just makes sense to share on all different aspects, including the responsibilities of the home that shouldn't all fall on the woman, especially if you're both working full time. Yes. Balance is, is key. Yeah. We yeah, agree that, on that. Yeah. That's <laughs> that I think a lot of people are very stuck in certain ideals, but like if there can be balance, why shouldn't there be balance? If like the way of science and the way of nature and the way of even everything like biblical, there's balance, but it's how you define that balance. You have to define it, but yeah, why not? Now, this one's, this one's fun. Okay. If your credit score was a person, what kind of person would it be? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a judgmental ass question. I can go first on this one. I'd say that my, if, if my credit... <laughs> My credit score was a person. It would be a responsible person that would. Oh, I thought we were talking about like, a, we will say actual name. What? No. <laughs> I was stop. I was going through a catalog. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Now I'm definitely going through a person now because that's going to be way funnier. Go ahead. Yeah, no. The personality. If it might, if, yeah, I would say mine would be a responsible person who still liked to have a little bit of fun. So it wouldn't be like the person that never did anything or never took a risk or never used any of their savings. But I would say it would be someone that take handles their business and made makes sure that they're being responsible, but also will have their moments of like, I want to have a little fun <laughs> too. So. My credit score would have to be like Chris Tucker and Rush Hour because he from LA and they invented gangs and my, my credit score is all different types of numbers. It's, it's, it's good. He's a good cop. But if you look at it, it's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, ain't, it ain't perfect, you feel me? It's not perfect. It's a little funny, but I can get anything that I, it's like, I'm not like high 800s. Right. I'm in the green. By the way, Chris Tucker is my, my favorite, my favorite comedian. I'm not saying that he's the funniest comedian ever. Nah, but it fits me. You feel me? I'm not perfect, but my credit score fits me. So y'all can be the judge of that. If y'all think that I'm a, <laughs> I'm a good person, then you'll think that my credit score is good. If you think that I'm a bad person, well, you're going to guess my credit score poorly. But yeah, Chris Tucker would be my, my personality for my, <laughs> <laughs> my credit score. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think that's, we're going to wrap up there actually okay. today. So. That works. I'm going to end it on that on that note, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Jam Session number five. Uh, jam Session number six, we're going to be talking about social media and work. So. Social, I suck at social media. All right. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs> <laughs>